hello you lovely lot how you diddling welcome to martin talk get my water i'm gonna talk a lot <sighs> as you can see it's dark <laughs> now um i'm not sure how that looks all going to come across in the video um i usually like to do it in the day but i just for whatever reason i haven't managed to, to get this done this week so hence we're doing it in the evening um but any feedback would be great if you want to comment um if it's a bit dark or anyway let's crack on so uh, i want to talk today about adhd but specifically i want to talk about can we see it in another way from a different perspective um it's a disorder a neurodevelopmental disorder but can we see it as an evolutionary advantage um so I'm going to kind of, first of all, talk a little bit about ADHD and then I'll talk about this hypothesis that I'm going to go into, which is the hunter-gatherer versus farmer. And then talk about now, today, because that's a theory and a hypothesis, but actually today in today's world and, and how we fit in, because we struggle to fit into a box, you know, we're wired differently, people with ADHD. But, okay, so let me start with generally with ADHD. Now, I, for me, I was um, diagnosed eight plus years ago. So before it was kind of all the information was out there. Um, and I had a kind of, it was a double-edged sword for me. First of all, it was like, oh, okay, another um, <laughs> disorder, another diagnosis to, to set me apart from humanity and make me feel like there's something uh, seriously wrong with me. And... Um, a bit very dramatic and stuff you know? <laughs> um but on the other hand it was like aha now that makes sense all right I, it kind of helped me to understand me and why i was wired differently because i knew i was wired differently um for lot many different reasons i won't go into all of them of course but um you know i started to realize that i was ju not just my thinking but how i was kind of the, my makeup if you like because I, you know drinking caffeine um i started when i gave up alcohol i drank a lot of caffeine you know i want a lot of everything generally <laughs> but caffeine was the one i jumped on and i kind of people would talk about um getting the jitters um having too much caffeine. and i never experienced that and also i could have espressos there's a couple of times where i've had espressos really strong coffee and couple of it and then falling asleep kind of knocked me out um so i knew that was a bit odd and then um and also in my using days i i kind of sometimes i'd get the taste for amphetamines and i'd kind of have a roll of that i'd go through phases uh, and i knew that other people were hyperactive with it and kind of but with me i just wanted to sit on the sofa and smoke fucking endless chain smoke right oh so glamorous my using days <laughs> Um, so I knew I was different and, the, and when I was, I was trained as a counsellor to be addiction counsellor in the Priory and there was this nurse that was a, uh, an expert, addiction expert, and he explained it to me. Uh, I think it was a paradoxical reaction. I, I'd have a paradoxical reaction to certain drugs having the opposite effect, basically. Um, and that fits with ADHD. Now it didn't click then. Because it it doesn't didn't mention ADHD then, but I was like, ah, oh, okay. But then now I know, so that explains a lot. Um, but also with me, part of my social anxiety used to be about small talk with people or bumping into people uh, and having those um, conversations, um, very surface conversation. I'd struggle with that, and I didn't understand what that was. And now I know it's about because it's more about detail, everyday stuff, and I don't hold information that other people do and so what might be a nice easy conversation for others isn't for me i'm trying to access and recall memories that i don't hold it's, it's like my filing system's a bit wonky and it's more than a bit wonky actually it's like it's not a filing system pretty much <laughs> neurotypical people they'll forget things or go oh i don't remember what i did yesterday but but mine's a bit extreme and that they might ask me an ordinary question that is for other people just easy to answer for me I get stuck and it gets a bit awkward because people don't get one, <laughs> don't understand it. Anyway, anyway, let's not focus too much on me, right? Um, 
so look the, the point is you know ADHD can affect us in so many ways it, it can trigger anxiety depression it can affect our work life our social life our relationships it can affect everything um, and I think you know as we grow up because it you know it used to be didn't it the the ADHD was typically young boys in schools that are a bit disruptive uh, um, like naughty boys and that was a stereotypical idea but as we've evolved thankfully we understand it more and that actually it does affect females as well um, and that we just present differently it manifests differently but also that it's actually into adulthood so it, you don't grow out of it uh, and it's not a new phenomenon this went back I think it's the 18th century where there was papers written on it and it was about morbid attention so attention disorder and hyperactivity uh it went into the dsm first was add in the 1980s i think and then adhd was in there in the ninth in 1987 but of course since then it's evolved again more and it's been saturated on social media and so a lot of people now talk about it and we understand that it goes into adulthood and it's males and females and that we just, there's a spectrum of um, symptoms and people have it in different ways. But there's general case for um, the, the selective, the, um, the main sort of symptoms of it, which I'm going to go into because I'm going to talk about this theory now. So I kind of uh, wanted to find out more about, I, I've i had medication for other diagnosis. Now, obviously, diagnosis, ADHD can be linked with addic addiction. Um it's the kind of seeking stimulation because the dopamine levels which links with addiction. So that would make sense in my diagnosis. I have another diagnosis. So it's like comorbid. I have several diagnoses. And I've been on medication in my life. I've had to be. And um, I'm not in that camp of you should or you shouldn't. However, medication, I've had to come off it in the past because when I got clean and sober, the, the first thing I wanted is I wanted to start living life, right? And these drugs were making me like a zombie I felt comatosed and so I knew that I couldn't really do much with my life if I was going to be medicated like that um so I wanted to come off but I knew then I'd have to feel everything right so what it does is it, it will kind of um moderate my um my feelings and so it'll dumb it all down well when it dumbs it down it doesn't just dumb the bad stuff it dumbs the good stuff so you don't you just literally like that well life is about experiencing the the bad and the good right so i was up for that generally i want to live medication free where possible so I, i'm always looking for an alternative explanation right i want to kind of look well if if i hear that it's not a disorder and that actually I'm genetically um, wired in a different way. I'm having a look at that. So th this move me, moves me into this hypothesis. So the uh, hypothesis basically is that people with ADHD are um, genetic descendants of the hunters in the hunter-gatherer kind of um, era. So we're wired for the hunt, and I like that, right? So because where I've got a disorder, um, and I'm deficient <laughs> ADHD if I can find um that actually I'm useful and actually fucking useful for survival for feeding my tribe for me and my tribe I'm I'm going with that right so so let's look at it now the, the theory is hunters gatherers versus the farmers and and the hunters gatherers were nomads and they'd go around kind of not settling but moving from place to place hunting feeding themselves like living in caves that kind of thing and then they kind of evolved and it become farmers okay so they started to settle and they'd farm the land and they'd domesticate the animals all right but this meant this new kind of life meant it was totally different so it's a kind of agricultural revolution if you like and we didn't fit into that box because the hunter gatherer fit our lifestyle we're a bit hyperactive we're on the go i'm going to go through all the symptoms in a minute but we're kind of more result orientated we want immediate we're impulsive we're hyperactive hypersensitive we want to be on the go but then when we come into the farm it was more detail orientated it was more kind of goal orientated so it's about strategic planning on the long term 
organizing um being dependable and you know a stable kind of being committed being committed to that is seasonal it was about prepping the store soil um rotating crops sowing the seed waiting for the harvest and so it, it was a completely different lifestyle which is where we didn't fit in and of course we've now evolved the industrial Re revolution etc but we're not fit for that if you like we're not wired for that or so we think because i want to go on to an to talk about something else in a minute but let's look at the symptoms then okay so me as a hunter okay so if i'm hyperactive how does that help me well having high energy levels right pretty much constantly would mean i'm ready for the chase so if i'm a nomad and i'm traveling about i need to be kind of ready for the hunt if if the the prey comes into my vicinity into my environment i need to be ready for that right so i need to be on high alert that fits with the hypersensitivity that we talk about. So we're sensitive not just in our our senses, but in our emotions as well. Well, in our senses, if we've got heightened senses, right? So we need to see it, feel it, hear it, etc. That means ready for scanning the environment. We need to be alert if we've, again, if prey comes into our vicinity. Or to be tracking it, we need to have our senses. Now, with the emotion part, that's that's explained the hypersensitivity and our not being able to regulate our emotions. If we're in this fight or flight constantly, then all the energy is going to adrenaline, which is flooding my body, and my heart rate's going up, and I'm breathing heavily. Okay, so all all that blood and that energy is going to my body, and my prefrontal cortex is not receiving any of that nourishment, and so it can shut down almost. Our, our emotions come from our amygdala and the prefrontal cortex It's what regulates that. Well, we've got too much going on. So that would explain that. Uh, being impulsive. So now to be a good hunter, I need to be kind of brave and, and take risks, right? And that's what impulsivity is. We kind of have a problem with risk taking and we would need that because the last thing we want to do in a hunt is to hesitate. And that also comes into detail, not detail orientated. We need to make rapid decisions. And if we're someone that's detail orientated, we want to take our time on that. Well, we've got no time, right? So it's rapid response, rapid decision making. Um, and about our attention. Now, if we are able to focus on a task, then we're not going to be able to keep to adapt our um, attention elsewhere and to quickly switch it. So that's why we're easy, easily distractible. And that's again so that we can keep our mind on anything around the environment um keeping watch if you like so i don't think it was necessarily just hunting either it might have been keeping watch and keeping us safe from our own predators as well so and that's part of the hunt i believe so you know it all it all fits now th there isn't much said about the procrastination or the um the paralysis adhd paralysis and i don't think that's that's listed in the dsm i could be wrong but I experience that and I understand it. And how I can fit that into to this theory, this hypothesis, hypothesis, is that if I am on high alert all the time and it's a stress response, which is not good for our body at, at all times for obvious reasons, um, it's good for the hunt for that for that quick moment, but not consist like continually. So if we have that paralysis and we're not someone that's wired to easily relax, then that able enables us to stop um and to reserve our energy levels and to keep that kind of stress response at bay so it all for me it fits all right and it also fits into the gatherer foraging for food as well in, in the sense that um being easily distractible means that i move from one task one bush to another so we're getting more of the fresh fruit rather than the dregs of the bush i'm able to move from one place to the other and being nomads, of course, being on the go all the time. And then the farmers being completely different. So so the, the agricultural revolution come on. So us hunters were then sort of moved into this farming and we didn't fit, you know. And as we've then gone into the industrial revolution, the same thing is it's more about strategic planning. It's more about patience. It's, you know, fitting in that box of nine to five, those perimeters and then rules and you know, there were them days where, and I think this is where Daniel Priestley talks about the entrepreneur revolution, which I'll come on to in a moment. But 
that you know now it isn't about the staying on for 40 years in an organization and getting your clock or your watch to say well done for your service it's now about kind of negotiating different careers and moving places and having your cv and it's you know the entrepreneur revolution that daniel priestley talks about is that you know now's the best time for people like us you know if we've got adhd creators innovators you know thinking on our feet uh, we're adaptable we can kind of take risks and, and business is about, you know, success is about taking risks, that we're primed for that. So, okay, you know, if you don't buy that theory of the, the hypothesis of the hunter-gatherer and the, the farmer, we can still kind of um, leave that behind and say, well, actually, now that things have changed, maybe it's come around again that we are now at our pri in our prime for for people that are wired like me. Um, and there are good people that are in our camp, right? There's those Richard Branson, Bill Gates. There's lots of people that are kind of innovators and, and creators, forward thinkers, um, that have traits, either being diagnosed or not, or have the traits of that. And they don't think like our, our world, new world was, you know, how we was meant to be, this farming kind of concept. So look, you know, what's my point? Now, for me, it's really important to um, look at the positive in things. And, and so I, I, I don't want to see it as a disorder. I, I want to see um, the way I'm wired to see that the advantage of that. Where can it be an advantage? What, what turns me on? What motivates me? What gets me places? You know, how can I seize opportunities? The passion that I've got. Um, we're passionate people, right? And that that for business owners in today and entrepreneurs, we need that. We need that passion. We need that fast thinking. We need to be adaptable. Um, we need to be mentally flexible. Um, we need to be able to take risks. And that, that all fits with this new kind of, if we want to call it the entrepreneur revolution. So today things are changing. Um, that's So that's how I want to see it. And, you know, I need to know myself before I can make plans and make the best life for me, carve out the best life for me. Socrates says it, doesn't he? Know thyself. And so I, that's what I need to do. I need to kind of, I'm, it's my responsibility, my life, my responsibility. Instead of being the victim and seeing it as a disorder, I need to go out there and go, right, okay, what works for me? And this is why I'm doing this YouTube channel. This means that those that red tape that I might have had to struggle with in college teaching, by the way, is a good career for someone with ADHD. And that's why I think it fits. But I still have the red tape behind it that I'd struggle with in a college, for instance. But if I'm doing a YouTube channel, um, I can fit that around me when I want to do it. It's kind of at my pace, right? So those those tasks that I might struggle with that's kind of within my reach to do it at, at my time when that suits me. Um, you know, and if, you know, the mountain won't come to Mohammed, you know, we, I have to kind of carve that stuff out. I have to make it fit me. And that's what, that's what I'm excited about is just to sort of share that, you know, one, we could look at it that actually we're skilled people. We just weren't for this world. But actually, if we look forward, we are perhaps made for this world and especially our kids so if you've got if you're anyone that has got kids with ADHD it's a great time to to encourage them to think outside the box to take risks in business not to kind of just necessarily follow the path that they think they're meant to um and to to know themselves get to know what makes them tick how they work and where their skills are um and get creative that's what I say um I feel like I've mumbled a bit it's not unusual, um, but I hope that um, I've kind of made sense and that I've kind of um, given you some value, if that's what we want to call it. Um, you know, I I struggle, I, I've struggled with many things and, and one of the things, is, like I said, was small talk and I remember um, an ex-boyfriend saying, <laughs> he said, you're the most stupid, intelligent person I've ever met. <laughs> uh, he meant well. Um, and actually I shared that with my family and they were like, yeah, that's pretty bang on. <laughs> so, look, I can see it as a negative if I want. Look, I just don't think that ordinary people, I'm not wired that way, but I've got value and I'm giving it and I'm doing the best that I can and that's all that anyone can ask, right? But, look, thanks for listening, guys. Um, please like, 
please subscribe you can you can actually su subscribe without um anonymously so if it's because it's mental health self-development or whatever um and even i won't see who it is so please subscribe um comment if you can maybe about whether it was too dark a video or whether it worked whether you've got been diagnosed with adhd or your kids have or you haven't and you suspect you've got it um i'd love to hear from you what do you think about the theory and the hypothesis um etc but it'd be great to hear from you thanks for um watching and i uh, hope to see you in the next video Bye.